So CNN anchor Chris Cuomo got himself into a little bit of a tr yeah. of trouble <laughs> recently I, I on a radio bring, show. We had to bring this all. <laughs> it was funny. It just hysterical. So yeah, Chris Cuomo went on a radio show and talked about how much he hates his job. Um, this was yesterday. Let's take a listen. Because I don't want to spend my time doing things that I don't think va are valuable enough to me personally. Like what? Well, I don't like what I do professionally, I've decided. Um, I like doing this show. I like talking to you guys. But I don't value indulging irrationality, hyperpartisanship. I don't think it's worth my time. And I don't want some jackass, loser, fat tire biker um, to be able to pull over uh, and get in my face and in my space and talk bullshit to me. I don't want to hear it. And just like you would, right? You, you're not going to tolerate that, right? Some cat just basically pulls up in the driveway next to yours and starts getting in your face about stuff. How, how's that going to go? How's that going to go, right? That matters to me more than making millions of dollars a year. That matters to me more. Why? Because I've saved my money. <laughs> uh, he walked it back. Says, I never said it. I never meant it. Walked back. His, I think his uh, bosses got pretty mad. Yeah, I think Zucker said. Also revealed Chris, there. clean it up. <laughs> revealed there that Chris just signed a multi-year deal at CNN. So. <laughs> I guess he Lock must in, not. buddy. <laughs> guess he must not hate it that much. Must say I hate it that much. I must, don't must like what I money. do. I, I think it's very revealing. And you know this, for how many people in actual cable news feel about their jobs yeah. and the pointlessness which, which so much of their coverage is perceived by them because they're not dumb people. Like they got to these positions by caring about things and then they end up, like on his show, just having to cover the same crap over and over and over again. It's like a relentless drumbeat. Some of them actually are truly vapid, stupid, and empty people. But as you know, I mean, some of the, some of the better ones, that's how they actually feel inside. And like, they get paid a lot of money and it takes a lot of toll um, on them to just, like you said, Republicans who don't mean anything, Democrats who don't mean what they're saying. It's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. It ultimately feels very hollow because you realize that you're not part of some like noble journalistic mm -hmm. enterprise. You're not fighting for anything real. You're not really speaking truth to power. You're sort of cosplaying this, you know, D versus R yeah. daily cage match, um, which is what rates. And it's ultimately like a bottom line ratings driven mm -hmm. sort of hellish landscape. And you can't swim in that sea if you have any level of self-awareness without realizing what you are sort of contributing to what you're sort of feeding. I mean, I think a lot of people look at um, Chris Hayes over at MSNBC, yes. who was a real sort of activist, leftist, still brings some elements of that into his show, and yet he's doing the same, like going through the same Russian motions, yeah. covering the same dumb stories in the same conspiratorial way as everyone else in the network. And I think a lot of people wonder, like, do you realize what, like, is there that self-awareness there of what you're contributing to? Because ultimately, CNN and MSNBC are like Team DNC. Every single story is Trump is bad. Every single story is told through the lens and perspective of the Democratic establishment. They're not independent, objective journalists. They're like, you know, engaging in basically cheering for the home team. Right. Fox filters everything through the like pro-Republican party lens and everything is done from that angle. And so ultimately when you do that day after day, same stories, same bottom line, Trump is good or Trump is bad every single day without moving the needle ultimately. I mean, even if your goal is like Trump is bad and I want to tank him, you're not even moving the needle on that metric. Yeah, you have to look at it and be like, what am I doing? Yeah, and no, Do I really need the money? What am I doing with my life? Well, also, he's not really speaking to that many people because he works at CNN. But, you know, it's like you look at these things and you just understand that 
it's it's an empty and a hollow husk, and it's not heterodox at all. There's only one heterodox person on all of the national TV, and that's Tucker. Pretty much everybody else toes entirely the party line. They don't highlight new or interesting stories. They don't bring on dissenting voices. They don't bring on these people without completely having fealty to whatever the D line is, whatever the R line mm-hmm. is. Even, I mean, what do these people go famous for? This is the other thing. They get famous not for extracting information with politicians, but for yelling at them. Yeah, that's, that's it. True. Like literally, and, you know, yeah. I remember this when I covered the White House. It was the same thing. If you ask a good journalistic question, you will not become famous. You will not become Jim Acosta and sell a bunch of books. The way that you get famous and airtime and coverage and all of that is to get in a physical confrontation with the president. Being like, oh, well, you're a liar. And that's how you do it. You play it up for the ratings. And then it becomes Trump hates the press and then Fox gets involved and they go after the reporter and then the reporter gets on TV and then they get to write some stupid book. Right. That's how it works. It's, right. None of it is about information. Right. It's all just a self-feedback loop. And you and I have both seen in cable news, too, how they'll put people on who have no expertise in yeah. a particular subject matter just because they're willing to say like the most outrageous, outrageous. thing with the most confidence. Mm-hmm. Like that's the whole game. You yeah. see who the, you know, resistance grifters are. It's all an arms race to say the most extreme, most outrageous thing you possibly can about Donald Trump or about the Democrats. Like that's what's rewarded. And so yeah, if you're if you're a remotely smart person who's even slightly self-aware about right. the system that you're feeding and operating in, you might come away feeling like Chris Cuomo. Yeah. I don't like what I do. I don't I like do. what I do. Quote. <laughs> no, he says he never said it and he never meant well, it. Well, he, saw, he signed that new deal, so he must not hate it that much. Sorry, Chris. All right, we'll have more rising for you after this.